Hey everybody and welcome to a new video in the PyTorch for audio and music processing series. In the previous video we built the Urban Sound dataset class, which is a PyTorch custom dataset class. Now, this class so far has some limitations. It's only able to load waveforms from audio files and their associated uh, labels and return them. Now, what we want to deal with for our sound classifier are not really waveforms, but rather MEL spectrograms. So what we're going to do in this video is using Torch Audio to extract MEL spectrograms in, and all of that is going to be wrapped within this Urban Sound dataset class. For extracting MEL spectrograms, we're going to be using a particular module of Torch Audio that's called Transformations. Now, let's take a look at it in the Torch Audio documentation. So here you have the module. So this, the transformations that are within transforms are kind of operations that allow us to transform audio signals. So now let's take a look at a few of these transformations that we have here in this module. So one is of course spectrogram and here, uh, all this does is extracting a spectrogram from uh, a, an audio waveform. Then we have, for example, Griffin Lim that does actually the opposite. So we start with a spectrogram and we go back to the the waveform. And then there's, for example, amplitude to decibels. So here we do a transformation where we take a spectrogram and we move it from a linear scale in the amplitude to a logarithmic one, actually the uh, decibel scale. We have some stuff with MEL scale and down here we have the thing that we are interested in. So MEL uh, spectrogram. So this is a transformation that all it does, it takes a an audio uh, time series and then it just gives us, it computes the MEL spectrogram and gives uh, that as back to us. Okay, so here we should pass a few um, arguments to it when we instantiate this MEL spectrogram object. And so here we have a uh, sample rate, the frame size, and yeah, the, the wind length and the hop length. Okay, so down here we can just take a look at other transformations. So for example, we have MFCC uh, and a bunch of others, a resample that we're gonna use today as well that allows us to uh, resample a, an audio. Uh, or a waveform, and then we have a bunch of others like frequency masking, time masking, and so on and so forth. As I mentioned, we'll be using two of these transformations today. One is MELT spectrogram and the other one is a resample. Okay, so let's just jump into the code straight away. Okay, the first thing that I want to do here is agreeing on a sample rate or setting a sample rate and we'll say we'll set this to 16 uh, k. So that's the sample rate that we'll, we're going to be using. Okay. Next, I want to create a MEL spectrogram transformation. It's MEL spectrogram. Okay. So we know that this is from Torch Audio dot transforms dot, and here we pass the MEL spectrogram, and here. Uh, as we saw in the documentation, we should pass a few arguments. So sample rate and we'll pass sample rate here. Then the second one is going to be N uh, FFT, which is the, the frame size. And we'll set the frame size equal to 1024, which is a quite typical number. Then we go on with the hop length and we'll set it to half the frame size, so 512. And finally, we pass the number of melts. And here we we'll say, yeah, 64 melts. Now, if you're not familiar with what a melt spectrogram is, don't worry, because I have a series on audio processing for machine learning and a video that I'll leave you up here where I specifically talk about MEL spectrograms in a lot of detail. So go check that out. Okay, so now we have this MEL spectrogram transformation, which is this Torch Audio uh, Transforms MEL spectrogram object. Okay, so what we want to do is passing this MEL spectrogram here 
to our USD object, which is this urban sound dataset object, and we'll pass it in the constructor mel spectrogram. Okay, so now we should operate on the urban sound dataset class so that we can apply this mel spectrogram at some point after we've loaded the uh, audio data. Okay, so here, first of all, we should. Uh, modify our constructor accordingly to what we've done in our main script and so here we'll call this uh, we will have another argument which we'll call transformation so we'll keep it quite abstract because right now we are passing in melt spectrograms uh, a melt spectrogram transformation but it could be any of the Mm, total audio transformations that we saw earlier in the documentation. It could be MFCC, it could be mm, fade, it could be whatever really. Okay, so now let's register this transformation on a public attribute called transformation. Transformation. Okay, so we'll pass this one in. Now we also need another piece of information which is the sample rate. So I'll pass the sample uh, rate here to this constructor. Well, it's actually the constant, okay? So I'm passing the, the constant up here to this constructor. And of course, I have to modify the constructor accordingly. So I'll say, uh, let's call this target sample, sample rate. Okay, so we'll register that to a target sample rate public attribute. Now, this is gonna come in handy in a while and you'll see why that's the case. Okay, so now the the main thing that we want to do here is apply this transformation, which in our case is the melt spectrogram, to the file, the audio file that we'll, we are loading. Okay, so, in order to do that, we need to modify just one um, method. That's this get item method. Now, what get item does uh, is basically enabling us to uh, index the a urban sound dataset objects like this, right? Now, if you want all of the details about get item, I highly suggest you to go check out my previous video where, of course, I just code this out so you'll get all the details there. Okay, but what get item does for now, it just um, loads a um, an audio file at a particular index that's identified within the uh, data set and it loads it using torchaudio.load and we get the, the signal back and we get the associated uh, sample rate. Now, what we want to do here is the extra step, which is that of transforming this waveform into a MEL spectrogram or just pass it through our transformation. So how do we do that? Well, that's particularly simple to do. So we'll call signal and then the next thing that we want to do is take our self dot transformation and pass it pass it in a the original signal okay so this is equivalent in our case to taking this mel spectrogram mel spectrogram and then pass in the signal. So the result of this will actually be a MEL spectrogram. So it will be the MEL spectrogram of this signal. Now, I'm sure you'll be wondering, but this is an object, this isn't a function or anything. Yeah, but this is a callable object because all of this, are the objects that are within the transforms module in Torch Audio are callables. And so we can directly pass uh, the signal in and then melt spectrogram will just uh, be applied to the signal and give us back the, the actual melt spectrogram. Okay. So this is as simple as that. So you may think that we are already done, aren't we, right? 
So here we have our new signal, which in our case is going to be a MEL spectrogram. We are going to return it. That's it. Well, yes and no. There are still a couple of things that we actually need to do. And it's kind of like normalizing in a sense or making uniform, not really normalizing, uh, the uh, data set that we have. Now, uh, the prob problem number one is that not all the uh, audio samples that we have in the data set are mono uh, audio samples. They may be stereo samples, so they have two uh, channels, right? Or they can have multiple channels, three, four, five channels. So we're not really interested in having more than one channel. So what we want to do is take the initial signal that we've loaded and then mix it down to mono. Okay, so we can do that uh, by using, once again, torch directly. But for now, let's just use a placeholder private method that we're going to implement in a second. So we'll call this method mix down if necessary, necessary. And here we'll pass in the signal. Okay, so we'll implement this in a second, but before we need to take care of another important point, which is that in our urban sound data set, not all the samples have the same sample rate. Actually, they have a lot of different sample rates. And this is really a problem if we want them to uh, have uniformity in the, the MEL spectrograms that we are getting back. In other words, what we need to do is resample all the data that we load so that it has all the data has the same uh, sample rate so that we can ensure at that point that the output of what we have in terms of MEL spectrograms is coherent in its shape, in its dimensions. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, again, we can use a Torch Audio for that, but for now, uh, let's just uh, put another placeholder method, private method. So we'll call this self dot Mm, this one we could call resample if necessary. Okay. And here we should pass both the signal and the sample rate of the loaded audio sample. Okay. Cool. So now let's just go and implement these two methods. So resample if necessary and mix down if necessary. So we'll start from resampling. Okay, so here we'll do resample if necessary, self, and uh, we'll pass signal, and we'll pass the sample rate. Okay, so what should we do here? Well, as we already saw here in transforms, there's one of these transformations which is actually called a resample. You have it here, right? So torch audio.transforms.resample. And the arguments are the or original frequency, right? And the new frequency or the target frequency. And then the resampling method, you can specify one, but we are just going to be using this sync interpolation, which is the default one. Okay. So. Uh, let's just create the resampler and we'll instantiate by calling torch audio transforms and then a resample as the original signal will pass in SR, which we are passing in here as a as an argument. And it's the sample rate that we extracted when loading the audio sample with torch audio. Okay, and then the target sample is self dot target sample rate. Good. Okay, the next step is that of getting the signal and applying resampler to the signal. Okay, so once again, this is a callable object so we can pass directly in the, the signal like this. Okay. 
and we get back the signal. Now, there's a problem, really, but it's just like I, I would say like an optimization problem. Is that and the problem goes like this? So, there may be cases where the sample rate and is equal to the target sample rate. Well, in that case, we really don't want to apply resample, and we want to apply resampling only when the sample rate, the original sample rate, is different from the target sample rate. So let's just uh, uh, put in like this uh, if statement. So we'll say if the sample rate is different from self.target sample rate, then we'll apply resampling. Otherwise, we'll just go to this return statement and pass signal as is, okay? So this is why we called this method resample if necessary, because if we have the sample rate, the original sample rate being equal to the target sample rate, well, in that case, we don't need resampling. Okay, that's great. Now, let's move on and implement this other private method. So mix down if necessary. Okay, so here we should pass signal as an argument. Okay. So now, how do we mix down a signal with multiple channels? Well, uh, the idea is quite simple. So we, we have a signal that has more than one channel. What we want to do is aggregating these multiple channels and mix them down to a single channel. So for that aggregation, what we can use, and traditionally we, we use most of the time, is a min operation. And that min operation we can directly uh, apply through uh, torch because it has its own min operation. So let's implement that. We write signal is equal to torch dot min. Oops, we pass the signal and then a couple of keyword arguments. So the dimension where we want to um, apply the min, and that's dimension zero, and then we'll say that we want to keep the dimensions. Okay, so now let's take a look for a second at this signal. Or I should say, well, yeah, let me just like write it here because probably it's easier to follow. So we are up here. So we've just loaded a, an audio sample. So we have the signal here. So now let's take a look at this signal. So the signal uh, is a tensor, is a PyTorch tensor, which has two dimensions. So the first dimension is number of channels. And the second dimension is just the different samples that we have, okay? So an example of this could be two and then 10,000 uh, sample, or let's say 16,000 samples, which with a sample rate of 16,000 is just a second worth of audio. Okay, so this is a stereo um, audio uh, waveform. Uh, now, what we want to do basically is mix this down to a tensor that looks like this. One and then 16,000. So that's what we are actually doing here. So now to aggregate, so we want to aggregate across the uh, the dimension zero here. And so this is why we have time uh, equal zero, so dimension equal zero. Okay. And now we return the signal. But we aren't completely done. And reason being that it's not always necessary to mix down the signal. So when is it not necessary? Well, that's when we only have one channel in the signal, okay? So if the signal is already mono, we don't need to mix it down. So we, we're just gonna save some computation by not applying this min uh, operation to the signal. So how do we determine that? We'll do if signal dot shape of zero is greater than one, then we have a signal with more than one channel, and then we do want to uh, mix it down and make it mono. So now signal.shape, so here basically uh, what we do is we get the shape, right? And it could be something like this, right? 
uh, as we said. So if and then we we just like index the um, the well, we take the zero index, which is the value for the number of channels. So here. This is basically like the, the number of channels, right? That we have in the signal. So if the number of channel is greater than one, of course, this is not a mono signal. And so we want to mix it down. Cool. Okay, so now, first of all, yeah, let me just uh, delete this because we don't need it. And now we are basically done. So we have our transformation done or the extraction of the mouse spectrogram done with torch audio. So now let's just like take a look once again at this get item method and see what we what we do. Okay. So starting from here, so we, we take the the signal in the relative sample reach, loading the audio sample with torch audio. Then we apply resampling if that's necessary. Then we mix down to mono if that of course is necessary. And finally, we apply our transformation, which in our specific example is this MEL spectrogram that we passed here. And in the end, we just return the signal, which once again, in our case, is the MEL spectrogram plus its associated label. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So uh, by running this in debug mode, well, yeah, let me, oops, just stop here in this dummy expression and take a look at the signal, okay? So let's go. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the signal. So the signal is a tensor uh, with one as the first dimension, which is correct because we only have one uh, channel and then it's 64 64 is the number of males that we passed in so that's correct and then we have 10 that's the number of frames so yeah this is uh, what we expected so this is working fine that's great you may be thinking that we are done and for this video indeed we are done but we're not done yet with urban sound data search there are still a few issues that we want to refine here so in the next video what we'll be doing is ensuring that the audio files have all the same uh, length, right? Because in the urban sound data set, different, we have uh, files with different uh, durations. So some files may be one second long, others like two seconds or 0.5 seconds, right? So we want to have all of these files to have like the same length. And for that, we are going to be using cutting and padding. I hope you found this uh, video interesting and useful. If that's the case, remember to leave a like because that helps the Sound of AI channel to be shared across more people and grow. I'll see you next time. Take care.